through 39. Matthew chapter 26. Beginning in verse 36. Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and they began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Our scripture this morning shows Jesus as he enters the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. There are two or three things going on in his life at this particular point. First of all, he's in great agony. No one wants to die at the age of 33, especially on the cross. And here Jesus learns a lesson that all of us must learn. How to accept what he could not understand. We have to do the same thing in life. Things happen to us that we can't understand in our faith. Sometimes is tried to its utmost limits. Secondly, it was very lonely. Oh, he had three disciples with him, but they fell asleep. They weren't paying attention to what was taking place. And you know, there are certain things that you and I in life we have to face alone. And some decisions we have to make all by ourselves. He was trusting God. In Mark's account in chapter 14 and verse 36, he uses the word when Jesus was praying, Abba, Father. Meaning, Daddy. He was calling on his father, his daddy, in childlike faith. When he couldn't understand, when things were going wrong and death faced him, he was calling on his father in simple, childlike trust. But his courage is also seen here because when he prayed, he rose from his knees. He got up from what he was doing and he says, Not my will, but whatever your will is. He made adjustments. Adjustments is what I want to talk to us about this morning for a little while. Well, they've served the Lord for many years. In advance of retiring, they had a home. A little home, not very big, but it was a home for them to move into. They reworked it to suit themselves. Everything was going fine. Invitations were still coming into breach to sing and to serve as an interim. And then one day as they were traveling, going on a journey, he fell sick, told his wife, I'm very sick, and he would help, and they pulled to the side of the road, and in just a moment, my dear friend Jerry was gone. Jerry, member of our choir, member of our church, Francis is now going through a time of adjustment. Adjustment. Well, she became very tired trying to go upstairs at a little beach home, enjoyed it very much with her precious husband, and he insisted that she go to the doctor and try to find out what was taking place because she was tiring out so quickly. And after a few tests and a few MRIs, they discovered that she had numerous brain tumors. And very quickly after that, Jenny passed away. For Bob, it was a time of adjustment. Adjustment. I could go on and on with those, thinking back on many of my friends and fellow church members that God has intervened in their lives. Things that happened to them that they couldn't understand, things that happened to them that they just had problems trying to come to grips with. People that you and I both know and we've loved through the years, but over these years, I've watched people to make adjustments in their lives. God's plan is the very best plan. Now, we may not understand it all right now, but 
His way is always the best way. It might be a little grave in baby land. It might be a lingering illness. It might mean facing bankruptcy. We don't know what's in store for us in the future. But God does. I've been preaching now for a few years. And I've learned that God makes no mistakes. Well, we may think they are, but God makes no mistakes. His way is always the best way. And when those things happen to you, you probably are saying, well, what must I do? What can I do? What I planned and what I dreamed and what I was thinking about, that just can't happen. So what is in store for me now? Well, I want to give you three simple things that I want you to think about. Listen very carefully. Number one, when something comes along that you can't quite understand, face reality. Accept the facts. I cannot have what I wanted. I, he's gone or she's gone and I can't bring him or her back. My, my baby was born deaf and she can't hear. Uh, I'm going to face reality. I'm going to face the situation. I'm going to look at it in reality. I'm going to look at the facts. And when your world is crushed and all is gloom, you could say, well, I'll just end it all. Or I'll go on living in despair. But the key word here is adjust. Adjust. Jesus cried, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. You know, sometimes these bad times that happen to us open up doors of opportunity of service for us. You know, God's plan being the best plan... Maybe you've come to the dead end part of your life. Your husband may have been taken. Your wife may have been taken. Your child may have been taken. You may have lost your job. Or maybe uh, your husband or your wife has come in one day and said, I don't love you anymore. I'm going to move out. I'm going to go away. And I don't want you to ever come around me again. Don't despair. God wants you to pick up the pieces of that broken heart of yours and let Him put it back together for you. And He wants you to let Him work in your life and to show you what His way is for you. Face reality. Face the facts. Secondly, God wants you to adjust. Make a stepping stone out of a stumbling stone. You can get back up and you can move on if you want to. If you want to. You're not a failure, someone said, because you fall. You're a failure if you do not endeavor to get up and get on with living. Think of all the great things that have happened because of some ill wind that blew into people's lives. There have been great works started because of a deaf child. Great works begun because of that. There have been great songs written because of marital problems such as no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Charles Wagle wrote that song. Charles Wagle was a preacher. He was a music man. And his wife somewhere along the way decided she didn't want to be with him anymore. And Charles Wagle sat down on that piano and began to play. And from that came no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Think about that. Robert Louis Stevenson had a fatal illness and in his bed of affliction he wrote some of the greatest articles and stories of his lifetime. Fanny Crosby, who was born blind, but she could see more than many of us. And we see practically every Sunday in our churches throughout the land some of the greatest hymns that have ever been written by a blind person. It reminds me of a story I heard one time about a fellow he applied for the janitor's job down at the First Baptist Church in his hometown. And he went in to apply for the job and the pastor was talking to him. And in the process of talking to him, the pastor found out the fellow couldn't read and he couldn't write. And he said to him, well, I'm sorry, sir, but uh, you can't have the job here. So the fellow went out and he had 10 cents in his pocket, so the story goes. And with that 10 cents, he bought an apple. He took that apple and he sold it for 25 cents. And he kept that up. Eventually, he went into the produce business. 
Eventually, this same fellow made a million dollars. He went to the bank to deposit that million, that million dollars, and the banker looked at him and began to talk to him, and the, he got all excited. He said, I want you to fill out these papers for me. And the fellow said, sir, I can't read and I can't write. The banker said, well, man, you made a million dollars and you can't read or write. Where would you be if you could read or write? You know the end of the story. Fellow said I'd be a janitor down in First Baptist Church. <laughs> you see, all the dead ends of life, we can pick up and move forward. And all of us face those dead ends. Every one of us come to a point in life, we feel like, man, we've just, here we are, we've stopped. We, we don't have anywhere else to go. No more mountains to climb. No more things to accomplish. But there's so much more. So much more than God wants us to do. Think about it. Plans and dreams yet uh, may get disturbed and they may get destroyed. Plans that you've had for years and years and years may get shattered. What are you going to do? Adjust. Adjust. That dead end that uh, you are now facing, and many of you may be facing a dead end at this point in your life, just think about this. It could be the greatest turning point of your entire life. A turning point right there. And you get up and you get on with life. And then, number three, be the best at whatever you do. Face reality. God wants you to adjust. And then be the best at whatever you choose to do. I have known people that have never taught a Sunday school class in their life. Would scare them absolutely to death if you were to put a teacher's quart in their hand and say, teach this class. They couldn't do it. I've known people that have never sung in a choir. I've known people that have never sung a solo. I've known people that have never played an instrument. But they are faithful to God and to His church. Think about that for a moment. It takes us all serving the Lord in His church. Now you may be facing that dead end. Life may be tangled up for you and you may be feeling, well, my life is in a mess. Kind of like, you know, you've had to, the son or daughter in your home and you've raised that child and you have great dreams for that child. You want that, that young man, you want him to be a doctor. You want him to be a professor. You want him to be the whatever. And he comes in one day and says to you, I am not going to school. I am not going to college. Matter of fact, so-and-so and I are going to get married right now. They're about 18 or 19 years old. Whatever. Your world explodes. Just explodes. All of your dreams go down the drain, you think. You think. Take that moment and adjust. Take that moment and adjust. Go the way that you can and do the best that you can and let God lead you. Let God protect you and care for you in that moment. Go out and say hello to a stranger with a smile on your face. Go down to the nursing home and visit someone to encourage them and come away encouraged. Sit down and write a note to a shut-in friend. Pray for your pastor. Pray for your Sunday school teacher. Pray for your church leadership. Pray for your deacons. Pray for your church staff. Take the moment just right then to turn things around and pray. You see, circumstances of life fall up our plans. But we don't have to give up. We don't have to stop. We don't have to shut everything down. Just. Many of you people here this morning, you're in business. Some of you in business for yourself. When things happen in your business, what do you do? You adjust. You adjust. On your job, things may not be going exactly like you think they ought to be going, and you sit down and you look at them and you adjust. There's adjustment times for all of us. Oh, if you only knew, if you only knew of the broken hearts that are probably in this room right now. We 
don't know who they all are, but we know that they're probably so. If you only knew down through the years of the burdens and the problems and the cares that I have listened to in all of my ministry. If you only knew. If you only knew. If you only knew of the heartaches and the tears that had been shed in my presence as I've listened to the sadness of people. Such as on one occasion a mother walked into my study one day. She had with her her 15-year-old daughter. She said to me, she said, I don't know why she wanted to come to see you today, but she said she wanted to talk to her pastor. She brought her into my study in the church. Out of school, she said, I told her if she wanted to talk to you, I would bring her to see you. That little girl sat down in front of my desk and she looked at me and she said, Preacher, I'm pregnant. Age 15. Mom and Daddy don't know this. I haven't told them. You're the first person I've told them. It's going to kill them. Will you tell them for me what has happened? And I knew who the boy was. She told me. I said, yes, I'll do that. Tears coming down my face because this little girl had been in her youth group. She had been a part of all activities. She was the apple of her daddy's eye, the only child. The mother came back and she came in and sat down and I told her. Now you would probably think that this mother's going to rant and rave and just pitch a fit and carry on something terribly. She looked at that little girl and she said, Honey, I love you. We will get through this we're going to take care of it. But I'm worried about your dad. <laughs> well, we told the dad. Dad took it. Oh, he was heartbroken. But he took it well, too. Now comes the other part of the story. Now, preacher, will you go and talk to the boys, mom and daddy? <laughs> I knew him well. This is part of the story that you're going to like. He carried a 38 pistol in his pocket at all times. I went to his house and knocked on the door and I, I called his name and I said, I want you to come outside with me for a while. We're going to sit down in the swing. Of you. He came out and sat down. And I broke to him the story. He said, now I know why you asked me out here. I said, yeah, I'm going to be up close to you so you can get your hand in your pocket. <laughs> they didn't accept it. To this day, they have never accepted it. That little girl's mother and daddy have now gone to heaven. They died very young. She did very well. Had the cutest baby boy who's a young man now that you've ever seen. But that mother and that daddy of that little girl did what I'm talking about this morning. They adjusted. They loved her. Took care of her. Adopted that baby as their own child. And raised it as their own child. You know, we have to face it down here. There's a veil of tears many of us have to go through. There's a veil of tears that we face every day. But just think about this. One of these days I'll come alongside of you and prop you up. One of these days you'll come alongside of me and you'll prop me up. That's what the church of Jesus Christ is all about. That's what we're all about, folks. Helping one another along life's way, just loving and caring and looking out for other people. And one of these days, trouble's going to come. It's going to come. Sooner or later, you're going to be faced with trouble. Somebody says you're either in trouble, you're coming out of trouble, or next day you're going to be in trouble. But trouble is there. So how are you going to deal with it? Just. Jesus faced troubles. He faced them and he adjusted to them. And when you adjust to them, you can say something like this. I've got days ahead of me to live. I've still got God in my heart. I've still got some future to deal with. And I'm going to adjust my life and I'm going to trust him. 
I may not be able to do what I plan to do, but I will do what I can. I will do it where I can, and I will do it the very best that I can. I'm going to adjust. Be willing to say like Jesus said to his heavenly Father, not my will, but thine be done. Whatever his will is for your heart, for your life, that's what you need to be asking God for. Not my will. That's what I've been praying for six years right here in our church. Not my will, but whatever the will of the Father is for Trinity Baptist Church, God let your will be done. Now listen, folks. Listen carefully. Somewhere along the way you may have sinned and, and it has caused you to forfeit something in your life. Don't give up. Don't give up. Take the alternate route and say, Lord, I want to go the way you want me to go this morning. I'm confessing to you and I want to, you to forgive me and I'm going to adjust in my life and do my best for you. <coughs> Our plans could lead us to death at any time. We may lose our base in life. We need to keep on keeping on. may lose our job. May, uh, we may do that. Our businesses may go, as the world says, belly up. But they say, God, what is your plan for my life? Give me your plan. I may lose my wealth. I may lose my health. Keep going. Keep going. Because good can come out bad. Think about old Joseph in the Bible. Brother Jennifer and I were talking about Joseph earlier this morning. Joseph had a rough time, didn't he? Taken by his brother, sold into slavery. Tripped up by Potiphar's wife, wound up in prison for several years. Wondering, what have I done to deserve this? And there he is. But when God brought him out, he made him ruler over many things. And you know, when it all boiled down to it, folks, his brothers came one day and they didn't even know who Joseph was. And Joseph said to them, you may have meant it for bad. God made it for good. Bad things may happen and old devil may be heading his way, but God's way is all. Just, just. Heavenly Father, thank you for these moments together. Thank you for the music that we've heard this morning, how it's blessed our hearts. Thank you for the words from the scriptures, Jesus prayed, not my will, but thine be done. Help us to make that our prayer this morning, Heavenly Father, where there's been problems, where there's been trouble, where there's been heartache, where there's been sorrow where there's been disappointment, where there's been despair. Not my will, but your will be done. And God, I pray this morning that if there's a person here without the Lord Jesus Christ, that today they will say yes to Jesus and invite him into their heart. For that person that desires to become a part of our church and its ministry, I pray that this would be the day that they would say yes and join with us to serve the Lord. There be a Christian here today, Father, that's drifted away from you and needs to come back home. May this be the day that they'll step forward and make a fresh start with you. All in your time, all in your will. We pray for Christ's sake. Amen. But Dave's going to come and lead us in our invitation hymn today. Living for Jesus, life of this truth, 605. We're going to stand and sing, and I'll meet you here at the front as you come forward. Let's stand and sing together, please.